Welcome to the Uthermo channel. In this video, we are going to discuss the thermodynamics of air cooling using a plastic bottle. These pictures, taken from the internet, show a situation in which the ambient temperature is equal to 44.1 degrees Celsius. The fan is initially off. Then, the fan is turned on, and air flows through the bottles that appear in the picture. Each of these bottles function as a converging nozzle. After some time, the measured temperature of air leaving the soda bottles is equal to 37.9 degrees Celsius. That is, a drop of about 6 degrees. Possible or impossible? To try to answer this question, let's formulate the following problem. Air at 44.1 degrees Celsius and at a pressure of 1.2 times 10 to the power 5 Pascal, enters a converging nozzle and exits at 37.9 degrees Celsius. The nozzle's diameters at the fluid input and output points are equal to 0.11 and 0.025 meters, respectively. Assume that air's behavior is well approximated by the behavior of nitrogen, taken as an ideal gas with molar heat capacity constant pressure equal to 29.12 joules per mole kelvin. Find nitrogen's average velocity at the nozzle's input and output. Our first assumption is that nitrogen behaves as an ideal gas. This is a good assumption because the temperature is well above the critical temperature of nitrogen and the pressure level is low. Our next assumption is that operation takes place at steady state. Changes to potential energy will be disregarded because the levels of the input and output streams in the soda bottle are about the same. We will also make the assumption that the nozzle has perfect thermal insulation. This is certainly not true for a soda bottle, but the residence time of the gas inside the bottle is so small there is little time for heat transfer. We will also assume isentropic flow. We will start the mathematical formulation of the problem looking at the mass balance written on a molar basis. The left-hand side of equation 1 represents the molar flow at the input. It's given by the product of the cross-sectional area by the average velocity divided by the molar volume. The term on the right-hand side of equation 1 represents the same quantity at the output. The difference between the output flow rate and the input flow rate should be equal to zero as indicated by equation 2. The molar volume is calculated using the ideal gas equation of state. This slide shows a fairly general form of the energy balance. We begin the simplification of this equation by applying the assumption of steady state operation. In this way, the time derivatives that appear on the left hand side and on the right hand side of the equation are both equal to zero. We cross out the potential energy terms because the difference in potential energy is negligible. Because of the assumption of perfect thermal insulation, the heat transfer rate is equal to zero. Finally, there is no shaft power in a converging nozzle. Crossing out all the terms that had been cancelled, we obtain equation 9. Inside the parentheses, we find the specific enthalpy and the specific kinetic energy, that is, energies per unit of mass. Equation 9 can be rewritten on a molar basis as done in equation 10. Because the molar flow rates are equal in the input and output streams, we can obtain equation 11. Using the problem assumptions, we can rewrite equation 11 as is done in equation 12. In it, M with subscript N2 represents the molar mass of nitrogen. The isentropic flow condition for an ideal gas leads to equation number 13. In summary, we have three equations. Equation 14 represents the mass balance. Equation 15 results from the energy balance. And equation 16 represents the isentropic flow condition for an ideal gas. We have three unknowns. The average velocity of the input stream, the average velocity of the output stream, and the pressure of the output stream. We will use Excel to solve the problem. The cells with orange background are specifications, such as the universal gas constant, heat capacity, molar mass, input and output temperatures, the diameters, 
and the pressure in the input. Let's begin the calculations. And the first thing we're going to do is to calculate the cross-sectional areas, pi times the diameter squared divided by four. We are doing this calculation for the input stream. We drag down to replicate for the output streams. Now we are going to convert the temperature from degrees Celsius to Kelvin for the input stream and for the output stream. We'll now use the ideal gas equation to calculate the molar volume in the input stream RT divided by P. And then again for the output stream. We can now calculate the molar flow rate of the input stream, the cross-sectional area, times the average velocity, which is initial gas, divided by the volume, the molar volume. And we have initial estimates for the output and output streams. We now calculate the difference between these two values to have an idea of the deviation in the mass balance. We will now calculate the difference in enthalpy plus kinetic energy between the output stream and the input stream. First, the Cp delta T term, and now we will account for the kinetic energies of the output and input streams. Output stream, now we're taking the input stream, taking it squared, and here we have it. We will now calculate the entropy difference. Again, we start with the temperature dependence term, the logarithm of the temperature ratio, and we will now account for the fact of pressure, minus R, ln of the pressure ratio. So these three values represent the deviations we currently have in the three equations we need to solve. We'll square each of these deviations and add them all to have a measure of the global deviation we currently have. Our goal will be to minimize this deviation and if it's equal to zero at the problem solution, we have solved the problem. So we try to minimize this cell and what we'll try to do is to find the input and output velocities and the output pressure. Let's check the options. We are using a very tight convergence criterion here. With central derivatives. We now press solve. We obtain the solution. And what we observe is that the input velocity is 5.6 meters per second. The output velocity is about 114 meters per second. And the pressure drops from 1.2 to 1.12 times 10 to the power 5 Pascal. The average flow speeds in our solution are not absurd at all. The output flow speed of 114 meters per second is well below the sound speed in nitrogen the problem conditions, and the sound speed is the upper limit for the flow in a converging nozzle. To have an idea of what the input flow speed of 5.6 meters per second represents, it's interesting to check the Beaufort wind force scale, which goes from 0 for no wind up to 12 for hurricane force winds. 5.6 meters per second has a value of 4 in the Beaufort scale. This corresponds to a moderate breeze, something that is easily achievable with a home fan. Observe that the temperature drops next to the nozzle's output. Away from it, the flow slows down and the temperature increases. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. My name is Marcelo Castier. See you the next time.